Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding VNA Calibration Basics. In this short presentation, we'll explain the importance of calibration in network analyzer measurements and the basic concepts and procedures used in both one and two port VNA calibration. If you're not already familiar with the basics of network analyzers and S-parameter measurements, it might be a good idea to watch the presentation, Understanding S-parameters, before beginning this presentation. Measurement accuracy and repeatability are always important, but it's fairly safe to say that vector network analyzer measurements are among the most demanding in the radio frequency world. Generally speaking, we can classify measurement errors into three main categories, namely drift errors, random errors, and systematic errors. You may also hear random errors and drift errors collectively referred to as stochastic errors. Regardless of type, errors cause inaccuracies in both the amplitude and the phase of measured signals, which means that errors are also vector quantities. Let's start by taking a brief look at each of these error types. Drift errors are caused by changes in the environment after calibration, and the majority of drift error is caused by temperature changes. Because of this, the main way to minimize drift error is to control the test environment and or allow the instrument time to warm up. Alternatively, we can remove drift error by performing a new calibration in the changed environment. However, even if we take these steps, we can only minimize drift error, not remove it completely. As opposed to drift errors, which are mostly caused by the environment, random errors are primarily caused by the test setup. This includes things like the noise from the instrument, measurement practices and settings, and even differences in the way that cables and connectors are attached to the test setup. The reason these are called random errors is that they vary over time in a non-repeatable, unpredictable way. High quality components and good measurement practices can help to minimize random errors. But just like drift errors, random errors can only be minimized, not removed completely. Systematic errors differ from both drift and random errors in that they're reproducible, predictable, and time invariant. This is because systematic errors are primarily caused by non-ideal components within our VNA and within the test setup itself. An example of a systematic error includes imperfections in the VNA, such as directional couplers that aren't perfectly directional. Other examples include cable loss and impedance mismatches. What's different about systematic errors is that systematic errors can be almost entirely removed through calibration. Calibration can be defined as the process by which we remove systematic errors from our measurement results. In order to perform a calibration, we first select a type of calibration based on the measurement setup and desired results. There are numerous types of calibration, which we'll cover shortly. We then connect special devices called calibration standards to different points in our test setup, usually where the DUT or device under test will eventually be connected. The VNA calibration routine is started and the response is measured. Note that many types of calibration require different standards to be connected and disconnected multiple times and or in multiple places. The resulting calibration data is then used to correct our results when measuring the device under test. It's important not to confuse measurement calibration with instrument calibration. A measurement calibration removes systematic errors in VNA measurements. It's performed by the user and is repeated rather frequently, often before each measurement session or at least before important measurements. Instrument calibration, on the other hand, is used to verify that the instrument is functioning within specifications. For example, that a generator is really outputting minus 10 dBm of power when output power is set to minus 10 dBm. Instrument calibration is performed by a service or calibration center, not by the user, and instruments are usually calibrated on a fixed time cycle, commonly every few years. A VNA has a valid measurement calibration when it displays cal, or similar, somewhere on the GUI. A VNA has a valid instrument calibration when its calibration stickers are intact, and the instrument has been in for a cal sometime during the last few years. Another important concept in calibration is a calibration plane, or reference plane, which is where calibration occurs. In most cases, the device under test is not directly connected to the VNA ports. In addition to cables, other devices, such as attenuators, may be between the DUT ports and the VNA ports. By defining our calibration or reference planes where the DUT will be attached, the influence of everything between the DUT and the analyzer ports will be removed or calibrated out. In order to perform a calibration, we need calibration standards. Calibration standards are usually delivered in the form of a calibration kit. 
the calibration standards in a kit are terminations or couplers with very precisely known magnitude and phase responses. In other words, we know what results we should get when we use them. This well-known response state is recorded in a so-called calibration kit definition file, which are often preloaded on an instrument or can be imported, for example, via USB. If we compare our measurements of these standards to their very precisely known values, we can quantify the magnitude and phase errors introduced by our VNA and by our measurement setup. The four most common calibration standards are through, open, short, and match. You'll sometimes hear match also referred to as load. The names and electrical properties of these calibration standards should be fairly self-explanatory. It is, however, important to keep in mind that even these rather straightforward standards are not ideal, especially over a wide frequency range. For example, at frequencies above 100 MHz, many opens start to develop capacitance. This is the reason why we need to provide our VNA with definitions for the standards that we're using. All opens are not created equal, so we can't use any random open during calibration and still expect accurate results. Often, calibration standards come as either discrete components or in the form of a calibration T, which combines the four most common standards, through, open, short, and match. In this case, calibration standards are manually connected and disconnected at the appropriate points in the calibration routine. An increasingly popular alternative to this is an automatic calibration kit, or AutoCal. These units contain the same calibration standards, through, open, short, and match but they are automatically switched in and out at the proper point in the calibration routine. The AutoCal unit is controlled by the VNA, usually over USB. Calibration data for these internal standards is stored within the AutoCal unit itself and therefore can be automatically read and used by the analyzer. AutoCal units minimize operator intervention, which is important for several reasons. The first, and by far the most important of these reasons, is that using an AutoCal unit is much faster than performing a manual calibration, especially as the number of ports increases. AutoCal lowers the risk of operator error, such as connecting the wrong standard or choosing the wrong Cal standard data. And lastly, because the standards are electronically switched, AutoCal units place much less stress and wear on the standards compared to a manual calibration. A calibration type essentially defines which calibration standards are through, open, short, and or match are used, as well as when and where they're connected during the calibration routine. We select our calibration type based on various criteria. For example, are we making one port or two port measurements? Are we measuring in only one direction between two ports or in both directions? How much accuracy do we need? And how much time do we have for calibration? And which calibration standards, if any, are available to us? In the remainder of this presentation, we'll provide a brief introduction to the most important types of calibration used in one and two port measurements, namely reflection normalization, full one-port calibration, transmission normalization, one-path two-port calibration, and two types of two-port full calibration. Let's start with the one-port calibration types, that is, calibrations used when making reflection measurements. There are really two categories of one-port calibration. The first of these is a full one-port calibration, which is the slowest type of one-port calibration, but provides the highest accuracy. It's the relatively slowest calibration because it requires an open, a short, and a match to be sequentially connected at the calibration plane. Normalization, on the other hand, is faster but less accurate, primarily because only one calibration standard is connected, either an open or a short. Two-port calibrations are used for transmission measurements. Just like one port calibration, we can make the distinction between the faster, less accurate normalization and the slower but more accurate full calibration. As before, normalization for transmission measurements requires only a single calibration standard, in this case, a through. The calibration can be done in one or both directions. Halfway between normalization and full calibration is something called one path two ports which is basically a combination of our full one-port open-short match plus a transmission normalization. Because we're doing the full calibration on one port, this only improves our results in one direction. If we do the full calibration on both ports, this is a full two-port calibration. There are two variants of this, the through open-short match and the unknown open-short match. Let's look at each of these last two more closely. 
Through open short match is, by far, the most common calibration type for two port measurements. Running a through open short match calibration provides calibration for reflection measurements at both ports, as well as transmission measurements in either direction between these ports. So, after running this calibration, we can make any S parameter measurements. The only downside of the through open short match calibration is that it can be somewhat time consuming and labor intensive. Eight sweeps are required. The three one port standards have to be connected one at a time to each port, and then the through has to be connected between the two ports and swept in both directions. Part of the appeal of auto calibration units is that the through open short match can be run in just a few seconds without having to manually connect and disconnect the calibration standards. In unknown open short match, the known through calibration standard is replaced with an unknown. This is usually a generic RF coupler. The only real requirement on the unknown is that it have the same characteristics in both directions. This calibration method is helpful when our DUT has different connector types, such as an SMA on one end and an end connector on the other. There's one last type of calibration procedure called an isolation measurement, which usually complements a through measurement. Remember that a through calibration measures the signal passing between the ports via an attached cable and connected devices. An isolation measurement is used to determine how much internal leakage, or crosstalk, there is between the test ports. As you might imagine, there's no physical calibration standard for an isolation measurement. The normal procedure is simply to terminate the test ports with 50 ohm loads. In most modern network analyzer measurements, isolation, or rather the lack of isolation, is not a significant source of error. So let's summarize what we've learned. Calibration is the process used to remove systematic errors when making network analyzer measurements, and calibration is performed at the so-called reference or calibration plane, which is where we connect our device under test. To perform a calibration, we use calibration standards, often delivered in the form of a set or a kit, and these are connected and measured at the calibration plane in a given sequence. The four most common standards are through, open, short, and match, and these can be implemented either as traditional discrete physical components, or it can be integrated into an automatic calibration unit. There are many different kinds of calibration, and we choose our calibration type based on the type of measurements we're making, for example, reflection versus transmission, as well as the desired level of accuracy. A normalization is faster because it only uses a single calibration standard, but is less accurate, whereas a full calibration provides the highest accuracy for a slight increase in time and effort. This concludes our presentation, Understanding VNA Calibration Basics. Thanks for watching.